R. A. Lister and Company was founded in Dursley, Gloucestershire, England, in 1867 by Sir Robert Ashton Lister (1845–1929) to produce agricultural machinery. Topic: History. Topic. 1867 to 1906 foundation and growth The founder of RA Lister and Company was Robert Ashton Lister who was born in 1845 He led the exhibit of the family's products to the Paris exhibition of 1867 but on return fell out with his father and in the same year founded RA Lister and Company in the former Howard's Lower Mill Water Street in Dursley to manufacture agricultural machinery. In 1889 Robert acquired the UK rights to manufacture and sell Danish engineer Mikhail Pedersen's new cream separator, which through a spinning centrifugal separator allowed the machine to run at a constant speed and hence create a regular consistency of cream. Marketed in the UK and British Empire as the Alexandra Cream Separator. Its success resulted in Pedersen moving to Dursley. In 1899, he founded the Dursley Pedersen Cycle Company with Ashton Lister. Robert was a pioneer of business in Western Canada, and took the first cream separator in that region over the plains of Alberta in a journey made by horse buggy. By the early 1900s, R.A. Listers had redesigned Pedersen's cream separator, expanded its lines of sheep shearing machinery, was producing milk churns and wooden barrels for butter, and from the offcuts developed a successful line of wood-based garden furniture. 1907–1928, petrol engines In 1909 the company acquired manufacturing rights from the London-based firm of F.C. Southwell & Co., for their design of petrol-driven engines derived from the design of a range of imported engines made by the U.S.-based Stover Manufacturing and Engine Company. During World War I, the factory was focused solely on war department production, producing petrol engines, lighting sets and munitions. Many of the men left for the front, meaning that a large portion of the workforce was female. After the war, Sir Robert Lister retired and turned management at Dursley over to his grandsons sons of Charles Ashton Lister CBE Robert, Frank, Percy and George together with A. E. Mellorup. Charles Ashton Lister managed the company's business in North America and was based in Canada. George managed home sales and Frank was in charge of buying, while Cecil did not have a clearly defined role at all, and, although Robert was the eldest, it was Percy, later Sir Percy who had by far the most significant impact. Developing foreign competition meant that the manufacturing of milk churns and barrels ceased, and the oversupply of second-hand ex-military engines and lighting sets reduced the company's profit considerably. The company was eventually turned round under Percy's control, aided by the introduction in 1926 of the Lister Auto Truck, used to move goods around factories, railway stations, and dockyards the world over. Production continued until 1973. As managing director, Percy led the firm through a period of significant growth and prosperity in the 1920s and 1930s. By 1926, the workforce was around 2,000 and was growing rapidly. The company ran a 24 hour manufacturing operation, expanding its range of products and supplying retailers to around 6,000 UK customers and many more worldwide. Retailing revenues were particularly healthy in Australia and New Zealand, where sheep shearing equipment was in great demand. Topic: 1929 to 1945 diesel engines. In 1929, Sir Robert died at the age of 84, and in the same year, the first of Lister's own design of CS Cold Start diesel engine was made, with one cylinder and producing nine horsepower (6.7 kilowatts). It became known as the Lister 9 to 1. 
This was quickly followed by the 5 to 1, 10 to 2, 18 to 2 and 38 to 4 all in 1930, the 27 to 3 in 1931 and 3 to 1 CD and CE in 1933. Lister engines were traditionally painted a mid-range shade of Brunswick green, which continues to be used today by Lister Petter. The CS is a slow-running reliable engine, suitable for driving electric generators or irrigation pumps. CS-type engines gained a reputation for longevity and reliability, especially in Commonwealth countries, to which they were widely exported. Some CS engines ran practically continuously for decades in agricultural, industrial and electrical applications. By 1936 Lister was producing 600 engines across a range of 80 different sizes and types of diesel and petrol models, most of which were small at around 1.5 to 3 horsepower. These could be bought stand alone many were used in the construction industry, or powering a complementary range of pumps, churns, cream separators, auto trucks, generating plant and sheep shearing equipment. The branded woodware works continued to produce ornamental tubs, garden seats and other ornamental garden furniture. The company headquarters were in an early 16th century priory building in Dursley. In the nearby valley was located a foundry, together with a number of other workshops necessary for the production of engines and the various other products offered, including a machining shop, capstan lathe shop, engine assembly lines, and a cooper's shop. Many goods were shipped out from the nearby Dursley Railway Station, which was located on land leased from Lister. During the late 1920s Sir Robert and Charles Ashton Lister had been responsible for trying to obtain payments of bad debts incurred by American and Canadian farmers during the Great Depression. Being sympathetic to their plight debts he suggested to Sir Robert that Listers should sue the banks as their, for their money. Sir Robert was not impressed. However, Charles remained in Canada where he built up the North American business for Listers as well as pursuing other business opportunities on his own. He returned to England in about 1936 with his second wife Doris Eleanor and four new sons, Charles Owen, John, Frederick William and James Hugh. Although remaining the majority shareholder of Listers the running of the company was left in the hands of his first family led by Sir Percy. Before going to North America Charles had been responsible for securing bad debt in Germany for R. A. Lister, during the county's period of hyperinflation. Always the pragmatist Charles settled debt at 40% of their value in marks. In order to try and protect the value of the funds repaid he invested in German property including a hotel in Bavaria of dubious repute. Charles saw at first hand the rise of the Nazi party and used the company's assets in Germany to assist those trying to rescue Jewish families from Germany and Austria by bribing officials. Charles had two Jewish daughters in Vienna who he had been unable to rescue. However, back in England in 1939 he was able to get the Austrian governess a Miss Simpkis of his second family to the continent. He and the rest of the family packed her suitcase with clothes in which they stuffed huge quantities of cash. This mission proved successful and all returned England just before the outbreak of World War II. Listers had continued to flourish during the 1930s, riding the economic financial crisis and building on its many earlier successes. The Lister family, although not as highly religious as the Cadbury family or Terry's of York, had supplemented their workers' lifestyles through regular company-wide excursions. The firm was profitable in the 1930s, and able to provide town-wide medical services and a social club, which still exists. The most successful Lister engine was the D-Type engine, introduced from 1931, most of which were rated at 1.5 hp at 700 rpm. More than 250,000 engines were built until 1964. They were used for a wide variety of light tasks such as pumping and small-scale electricity generation. 
The Lister D is still one of the most widely seen vintage stationary engines in the UK. Hand-cranked Lister diesel engines were used in many early dumpers. Lister took over Blackstone & Co. in 1937 to form Lister Blackstone. The factory returned to war production at the onset of World War II, producing engines, lighting sets, agricultural implements and shell cases. H. M. Queen Mary, who spent much of the war at nearby Badminton House, toured the factory in 1940, and Lister increased war production by opening components and sub-assembly plants in Nymphsfield 1942, Wooden Under Edge 1943, and Cinderford 1944. 1946–1965, independent after World War II, Lister bought marine mountings of Swindon from the Admiralty, which became the home of the D-type production till 1963 when the senior range became its main product, together with SL and LD models in one- to four-cylinder versions. Marine mountings was closed in 19. Having survived World War II, Lister continued to benefit from its reputation for durable, reliable high-quality engines, and its pedigree as an old established firm. However labor costs in the post-war period made a return to the heyday of the 1920s and 1930s impossible. Competition from rivals such as Petter and from overseas were also factors to be contended with, and unauthorized copycat engines Listeroids were produced in other countries. Small Creeps Day by Peter Curl Brown is a surrealist satire on modern industrial life. The 1965 novel was written while the author worked at R. A. Lister and Company, Dursley. 1967–1986, purchase and merger In 1965 following the death of Charles Ashton Lister CBE 1871–1965, Lister was acquired by Hawker Siddeley, who had bought its old rival Petter Diesels in 1957. A large investment was made in 1966 when they also bought the old Gresham and Craven plant in Walkden, Lancashire. This plant had a large iron foundry, pattern shop and machine shop. It was reorganized to supply diesel engine parts that were previously bought from subcontractors, including, cylinder heads, crankcases, flywheels, gearcases and a multitude of small parts for the parent plants. It also assembled moisture extraction units and the senior range of diesel generators employing 200 to 250 personnel until it was closed in 1971 because of a downturn in demand for diesel engines. <laughs> 